Well, today I've got a uh, special guest joining me. I've got Lachlan Manif. Now, Lachlan is a racing driver. Now, his experience includes karting, which is uh, where all the greats start. He's also raced in Formula Ford in the 86 series. And most recently, he has been racing in the TCR Australia uh series in uh, so super cheap auto tcr australia series um where he was racing in a volkswagen but has more recently moved into an audi rs3 lms uh the forza brakes motorsport team so lucky wonderful to have you here mate good morning good morning scott thanks so much for having me here it's um yeah pleasure Mate, it's wonderful to have you here. So for people who don't know you, um, so Lockie, mate, tell them a little bit about, about yourself and, um, yeah, mate, you, your current racing career. Yeah, so um, I'm 19. I've been um, racing in cars since since I was 14 in 2017 in, in Formula Ford and, and karting before that. As you mentioned, karting's kind of the great, uh, great, great place to kind of cut your teeth and, and learn all about you know, driving from, from a young age. I, I first had a drive in a go-kart when I was seven and started racing when I was 10. So, um, yeah, nearly been racing for kind of near 10 years now, which has been been really, really cool. And, um, yeah, obviously learning so much along the way and, and, you know, every lap that we're doing, especially these days, we're just learning so much. So, yeah, been been really enjoying it and very fortunate to have some, some great people support me to get me here where I am today. So, uh, yeah, really, really enjoying it and, um, yeah, keen to see what we can um, put together from here mate it's pretty wild so first first so it was into karting first yeah that's right so my family has a background in 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 motorsport not necessarily kind of circuit racing my um my dad and my uncle they raced dirt track speedway so sprint cars back in the kind of 80s and 90s and um yeah kind of from that um you know spent a lot of my time in four and five and six years old at um at kind of Parramatta Speedway in Sydney that, um, you know, kind of every, every Saturday night, um, you know, over the summer we'd, we'd spend there and, um, yeah, kind of anything cars, wheels or, or engines or, or, or motorsport I, um, fell in love with. So yeah, when I was seven, um, dad got a, got me a go-kart and, um, yeah, I think we we're kind of hooked from there. So yeah, since the first lap in, in the cart when I was seven, I, um, knew exactly that that was, that was why I wanted to do. And, um, yeah, trying to, uh, stay, 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 um, stay in it as much as we can. And, um, yeah, really enjoying everything that we've um, done done till now. Mate, it seems to be a very familiar story. Uh, if the old band's into it, um, there's a very good chance that you'll end up trackside. Uh, <laughs> tell me a little bit, uh, I, I'm sure you won't be an expert on all the ins and outs, but tell me a little bit about your dad's uh, uh, racing career there. Yeah, so dad um, in kind of the, the early 80s there, a friend of his took him to to um, the speedway in Sydney, and um, yeah, from there he just kind of kind of fell in love with it, and, and he did whatever he could to to make sure that he could, you know, get out and, and compete. So um, you know, worked really hard and saved all his money to, yeah, obviously um, kind of be, turn himself into a bit of an entrepreneur to try and afford and and um and pay for it all, and um, yeah, that's ex- exactly what he did. So kind of um, yeah, when he was younger, kind of. You know, flipping cars, and obviously worked as a worked as a mechanic during the week. But then, you know, on weekends and Friday nights and things, would you know buy cars, doing them up, flip them, and um, and you know, kind of make make the money there to afford to go racing. And then, um, yeah, that's kind of where he um, he morphed into um, you know buying and selling of, of anything. You know, cars, bikes, <laughs> motorbikes, trucks. Uh, but that's where he's kind of done for the last um, yeah twenty five or thirty years. So. Yeah, that's um kind of where he started to to get into motorsport and um, went straight into the top level in speedway, which is sprint cars. And um, yeah, at the time, you know, obviously bought a bought a car and an engine and, and competed. And um, yeah, had the car in the back of a, an open trailer and had no idea about what he was doing. You know, no idea about the setup of the car or how to you know properly drive them. He just um yeah had a whole heap of fun doing it. And um, yeah, from there, obviously. Uh, our family at that point hadn't had too much of an involvement in motorsport at all and he was really kind of the pioneer in learning you know what to do and how to do it Um, and then yeah from there my uncle which is dad's younger brother um, you know was kind of about um, yeah about kind of obviously looking at, at dad and what he was doing and, and was really interested in that and then obviously as, as a dad, this in my dad, life. <laughs> yeah yeah as dad kind of learned you know what to do and, and what not to do and met all the right people my 
my uncle uh, jumped in after that and picked up everything that dad learned and took it from there. So uh, in Australia, the youngest you can race a sprint car is, is at 16 years old. And um, yeah, my uncle, uh, Justin, he, um, yeah, obviously picked up everything that dad had learned. And um, yeah, by the time he was 16, he was competing in sprint cars and um, winning feature races as a, um, as a year 10 student. So that was pretty cool. Madness. And, and, with Speedway, what do you find the big attraction there? Because I'm I'm never a man that got sucked into the world of uh, sideways in the dirt. Uh, talk talk to me about the appeal of Speedway. Obviously, um, being being having a, a family involvement um, definitely kind of helped the the attraction. But I have a massive amount of respect for for dirt track racing and specifically sprint cars. Um, the cars themselves are just so pure. They're a V eight methanol powered naturally aspirated with no gearbox so um the cars have to be push started um with it with a car behind and um just the stats and figures on them are, are incredible well they weigh 650 kilos they have 900 horsepower so way more than a one to one ratio of horsepower to, to yeah. kilos of weight um and that's you know significantly more than um you know a formula one or a nascar in terms of power to weight um, the cars are extremely light, so they they handle uh, incredibly, and obviously the big wings on the top of them create a lot of downforce. So, yeah, the racing is is just so pure, um, and uh, yeah, obviously it's very different to circuit racing, um, but um, yeah, something that I have a massive amount of respect for. And and my brother now is is kind of jumped into a sprint car, and he's been been really enjoying that. And um, yeah, you know, I'm I'm certainly very very keen to take the keys off him for a, a night or two and try and get some wax. <laughs> but um yeah that would be uh, very cool and something i have a lot of respect for give it a whip around and and see this is one of the things i've uh, realized about your family is it's just pure madness uh they've got two sons racing in two different series um because how, how old's your younger brother now so my younger brother's 16 so he's um ever since he was he was racing carts as well from kind of you know eight nine and ten years old and kind of once he got to around 12 years old and he had to make the kind of step from the cadet class into the junior class. He um he he committed to, to what he wanted to do, which was sprint car racing, and decided to to park the go kart up and um spend kind of four four years waiting, and um getting himself ready for a sprint car drive. So yeah, that was um you know full full credit and respect to him to you know really um committing to to what he wants to do. And yeah, yeah. now that he's sixteen, he's jumped straight into the top class and. You know, that's kind of like in a circuit racing equivalent, you know, not racing mm. anything, jumping straight into a V8 supercar, obviously. Um, yeah. You know, he um, skips a lot of the, the junior divisions, which, um, yeah, if you kind of do that, you know, taking a, a, a vision that you're going to spend a couple of years learning, you know, by the time he's 18 or 19, he should be, um, yeah, really, really competitive. And mm. he's done two meetings so far and, and hasn't put a, a foot wrong at all the whole way. And, um, yeah, we're really keen to see how he's going to go in that. That's pretty awesome. Now, obviously, Speedway didn't speak to you the same way it spoke to your old man and your brother. Um, you've been called to circuit racing is seems to be what, what speaks to you the most. Tell me about that. Yeah, that's right. I guess it's kind of uh, in, in when you're, when you're you know, the age of, of seven or eight years old, you've got the kind of the, the main way into motorsport at all is, is you know, tar, um, tarmac karting. Um, and then obviously... Through that, we, we chased the, the karting route and went um, all the way up through the junior class to when I was 14. And, um, yeah, obviously at that point, um, you know, you've committed for seven years driving on tarmac and karting. Um, you really start to learn learn the um, the ropes there. And mm. I guess the, the biggest thing for us is that um, circuit racing, um, you know, in, in Formula Ford specifically in our circumstance, you can start racing at 14, whereas Speedway okay. is an age of 16. Um, and with kind of karting is is fantastic obviously um at the age of you know from from that seven to 14 range where there's there's no other um you know motorsport that you can do it's fantastic it's the best thing that you could you could ever do but um yeah from there we were just kind of after you know karting and, and a couple of state championships and things we were just looking for something different and yeah moved into formula forward and obviously i have a lot of respect for for speedway and um however i think you know there's probably a bit more of an opportunity to make a career in, in circuit racing and, and not that that's the specific single reason that we went circuit racing. It's just, mm. um, yeah, kind of natural progression and, and the people that we met in karting had, um, yeah, 
got us to, to move into Formula Ford. But um, yeah, obviously, you know, and then once we were we were there in Formula Ford, you know, you'd had a couple of seasons under our belt. We we're really starting to to learn and get some momentum. And um, yeah, it wasn't something that we we're looking to do to, to move on even into into Speedway, which was something you know completely different. So um, oh, yeah, really? we circuit racing route, and you know, obviously, really really enjoying it. I wouldn't want it any other way. But um, yeah, you know, I'm sure. Uh, a weekend or two in a sprint car would um, would be awesome. For me. <laughs> Just for a bit of fun, mate. Rip it up That's in the dirt. Right. That's right. Now, for people that um, aren't familiar with Formula Ford, do you want to explain that category and that vehicle to us? Yeah. So again, like a like a sprint car, a, a Formula Ford is is um, is extremely pure. You know, there's nothing on that car that that isn't there just in a sole purpose to make it fast and, um, and, you know, no extra luxuries on top. So, um, there are space frame, uh, chassis. So obviously all, um, tube and, and bar work there. Um, they weigh 500 kilos. So obviously, um, for a, a circuit racing car, extremely light. Um, really? they're a four speed H pattern gearbox with, um, a, a dog box. So no synchromesh gears. So you've really got to learn how to want um, to match the revs and, and things like that and um yeah obviously the cars have have a, a non they don't have a slick tire and they don't have any downforce or, or aerodynamics in that sense so yeah the cars move around a lot um, Ooh, and yeah. um yeah you know you look at the onboards of the cars and you know the drivers are always up on the wheel and um you know obviously <laughs> correcting with no with no, uh, with no downforce obviously the cars can race extremely close so um yeah, yeah you know formula forward it's it's shown in history that you know the the very best drivers from formula ford have gone on to do to do very good things in 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 all uh routes of, of circuit racing and kind of you know their supercars and and you know guys like mark weber in formula one and, and will power and indycar have come from you know australian formula ford so we're really really happy with with our time there we did that with the chg racing team from canberra and they did a fantastic job preparing the car and yeah we did uh a year in 2017 where we did a couple of new south wales state series rounds and then uh 2018 and 19 we committed to the national series and we finished fifth uh, in both of those years so um yeah we're really really happy with our time there you learn so much um yeah. as a driver you know obviously driving the cars cars up um race craft there's just so many different things that you can um, pick up from it and um yeah we, we loved our time in, in formula ford it was really cool can imagine and so after formula ford uh what what happens next yeah so we that kind of um in 2019 was our last season in Formula Ford, and um, we actually had a, a Toyota 86 production car that we had um, originally when I was 13, um, and we are looking at kind of options to move out of karting. We were looking to move to the New South Wales Production Touring Car Championship, which is a um, series for cars that are based off road cars that have been modified slightly in terms of um, safety with roll cages um, mm -hmm. and obviously safety equipment that are in race cars um you know they've got a um a controlled uh semi-slip tire you know obviously all the upgrades to brakes and fuel system um to make them you know proper proper race cars and then it races yeah. in a class system so you've got everything from you know bmw m3s and m4s to suzuki swifts in, in the in the class e so you've got you got five classes in that the classes a b c d and e the Toyota 86 that we had was was Class D, so it was a, obviously a, a really good series that it teaches you different things. But um, being being honest, in our in our time where I was at at, at 14, a Formula Four was was probably a better category. So we were committed to go down the the Toyota 86 route. But um, just as I was 13, about to um, you know about to be be 14, um, the Confederation of Australian Motorsport, as it was at the time, CAMS, changed the minimum age from. Uh, to race a production car, which was uh, which was 14 at the time to 15. So that meant that we would have had to yeah. have a year off um, the sidelines. So, yeah, yeah that kind of, you know, threw um, plans up pretty quick um, there as we'd committed to go to race the 86. And I was, um, yeah, now not going to be old enough. So the we made the call to race Formula Ford, which was still being able to, we could still race at 14, which, you know, doesn't make a, a whole lot of sense. The Formula Ford, say, at Eastern Creek is about 20 seconds a lap faster than the Toyota oh, yeah. 86. And They're being open wheeler, you know, arguably, arguably a little bit kind of more dangerous and things. So, um, yeah, we didn't quite understand the ruling there, but, you know, we had no control over that. So we moved no. into Formula Ford and that was probably the best call that we um, that we made. So, yeah, we were really happy with that, but we still had the the production car there and that was eligible for the Bathurst 6 Hour. So the Bathurst 6 Hour happens uh, at Easter every year. Um, it's the biggest production car race in the country um, for, yeah, production cars only. Six hours, uh, Bathurst, two or three drivers. 
Um, and yeah, obviously, what's uh, what's not to love about that? Obviously, the best track in the country, and um, you know some uh, some really cool cars. Obviously, production cars being based off road cars, you can't drive them flat out for for six hours. You've got to right. um, you know really look after your your equipment and and um, be obviously really smart with your strategy and things, and and make sure that you're positioned well for the the last hour of the race. Then you can go attack. So we did the really push it. Hour. Yeah. That's right. That's right. So we did the six hour in 2019. Myself and Tom Sargent. Um, at the time, we were 16 and 17 years old, which is 16 was the youngest you can race at, at Bathurst. So, yeah, we were um, you know, all, all quite green there, both of our first times at, at Bathurst. And, um, yeah, we had a, a really good event. We had um, a bit of a funny story with, with that event. We um, obviously... With the, with being you know such a, a long race, there's a lot of attrition that's involved, and you've really got to cool. try and um, make yourself last all the way to the end. And um, yeah, because these cars are, are based off um, you know their road going counterparts, we yeah. had a, a road car that we'd lent um, off a friend that was sitting in the car park, you know, just in case we needed something a little like a you know might have knocked the mirror off or need a radiator cap or something. But um, <laughs> yeah, Tom Sargent, my co-driver, started the race and doing really well 40 minutes in and um yeah heading up the mountain had a, an engine failure so that was um a bit oh. gut-wrenching for us um seeing the car oh. you know, kind of go up in smoke and um yeah. car parked on the side of the road and um, yeah obviously for us we were pretty um pretty devastated at the time seeing that only 40 minutes in and um yeah the pretty crazy thing is that um yeah it was kind of 40 minutes in that we I got the got the had the car um, lose the engine and um, yeah, kind of about forty minutes after that, we managed to to finally get the car back to the to the garage. Um, yeah. Kind of just the way that the race went, with no safety cars, the car wasn't able to be brought back to the garage. And with um, yeah, about at the hour twenty mark, we, the team had the um, the car back in the garage and we looked at the spare car and went, um, yeah, look, there's a there's an engine in uh, in that car. We can uh, <laughs> let's have a crack at, at trying to get it out. So we um, it was crazy. We probably had. We probably had um, around probably, I'd say, around eight people in the, the donor car engine bay stripping the engine out. And then at the same time, we probably had six people in the race car engine bay pulling that out too. And then, um, out. yeah, it ended up taking us around around two hours to have um, an engine out of the donor car, an engine out of the race car, and an engine in back in the race car. And with uh, about the three-hour mark to go, we had uh, the engine change. So that was pretty incredible to do a mid-race wow. engine change. Um, you know, when you go to your dealer to, to see an engine change, it's probably uh, a six-week job for, um, for yeah. them. But, um, yeah, we, uh, we had the engine change and popped out. And, um, and we're back in the race. So I um, I took over the car um, after they'd done the engine change. We did a, a, a full lap and, and pulled back in the yeah. pits just to make sure, you know, all the, the oil lines and everything was everything all was plugged um, in. Right. <laughs> it was. And, um, yeah, we, we went back out. So that was um, that was pretty crazy to be able to, to do an engine change in the middle of the race. And, um, and we got back out there and we finished. So at 16 and 17, Tom and I were the youngest finishers uh, of an endurance race at Bathurst, which was pretty cool. Um, and right. obviously, that was our goal, just to make the finish line. We obviously yeah. certainly didn't plan to do an engine change halfway through. But, um, yeah, does. that's the way that Bathurst goes. And, um, yeah, obviously, that was all, all pretty cool. So, to make the, the finish there was was awesome. And then, um, yeah, both myself and Tom, we, um, yeah, we, we won a rede- redemption um, for, for the Bathurst 6 Hour. And we'd entered the, the 2020 Bathurst 6 Hour that was that was ultimately cancelled, like a lot of things in in, um, in 2020 that year. But, yeah, um, yeah we, we rolled our entry over to the 2021 Bathurst 6 Hour and that uh, went, like a, went like a dream. It um, was an awesome event for us. There were 60 cars entered in the event, um, which is kind of near capacity for Bathurst and um yeah we ended up winning our class which was which was awesome we had a fantastic battle with um Ben Bagwana and Jude Bagwana in the class D uh Volkswagen Golf that they were racing um and yeah, yeah we good. obviously had a, a really big battle there with um with them guys and um uh, uh, uh strategy was was what got us um to um to to win the race there and um yeah we were a class D car obviously um in the Bathurst 6 hour you've got the addition of, of class X so you've got class X which is for um extreme uh, production cars and you've got a b c d and e and then um, we're obviously a, a d car and we finished 15th outright out of, out of 60 cars which was awesome yeah, so wow. on track we were only beaten by um class x and class a cars so there's a lot of kind of class b v8 commodores and and um yeah. you know like that that we that we'd beaten so um yeah that was a, a true credit to 
the team for putting a, a super reliable car together and um, and nailed the strategy. And um, yeah, Tom and I drove the wheels off the thing. And um, yeah, it was a <laughs> fast win. So it was um, yeah a really really cool event. Obviously, to get so many laps in Bathurst was was really cool. Yeah. Obviously, um, yeah, kind of the way the the stints and everything. Um, panned out we had uh, only three pit stops so your average stint time is around an hour and a half there and um yeah our middle stint there and the race was an hour and 58 minutes and um yeah i guess the only um yeah the only thing that happened all day that went wrong was uh they didn't change the the water bottle um in the in the car for that wow. uh, pit stop so yeah Brutal. i had an hour and 58 minutes at bathurst in um, the temperature outside was about 30 degrees ambient oh. you, can add, you can add about 20 degrees for the cabin temperature so oh, in, inside the car is revolting around 50 degrees for nearly two hours no water so i was pretty shagged after that one that's for sure Mate, but, uh, yeah you would have been uh, parched get, get it over to tom and we kept going and um yeah all all end out really well so um yeah that was an awesome event and um yeah really uh really keen to kind of one day, hopefully, um, enter back in that. But um, yeah, now uh, all our focus is in TCR that we're we're really um, really keen on. Yeah, and and mate, going to Bathurst for the first time because I mean it's obviously a very special track um, here in Australia. One of the things that blew me away was when I was um, involved in motor racing over in Europe, was people had come up to you and obviously in Europe, mate, they got all the most stunning tracks. You know, most of the most stunning tracks in the planet are located over there. And you're talking to people over at, you know, Nürburgring and they're going, oh, can't wait to come over and race at Bathurst. Um, and it's pretty special that, you know, our little Aussie track has that sort of notoriety because it is, it's wild. Um, what was it like for you going and racing there that very first time? Oh, it's it's, it's definitely surreal. Like, um, you know, I've, I've grown up watching, watching the race on TV and, you know, not being too far away from Bathurst going plenty of times. And, um, yeah, obviously the, the prestige and the history at that track is just incredible. And, um, you know, that's not even mentioning just how cool the track is obviously to drive. Mm -hmm. It's purely like, like no other, the elevation that the circuit has obviously, um, you know, how blind the, the circuit is across the top of the mountain, the speeds that you reach down Conrad Strait, there's just nothing like it at all. And, um, yeah, we're really, uh, really fortunate to, to race there. Um, you know, multiple times now. And, and the very first time was just unreal, obviously. Um, you head up Mountain Straight and obviously um, even that has, um, you know, some, some rise and fall in it. And, um, yeah, through through coming obviously up the, up, the, up the top of the mountain into the cutting for the first time, um, yeah, wow, obviously just the elevation seriously gets you. That's probably the biggest thing that you notice. And then, um, you know, obviously after that, a couple of, um, you know, a couple laps in once you're trying to, you know, get a groove and get yourself... Uh, all uh, get your, your head in the game. Um, you know, obviously, just how blind the track is. You've really got to um, commit uh, to the track and 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 trust your car that you know the track hasn't changed. You know, lap to another. Obviously, um, yeah, you're turning in at some pretty big speeds, and and you can't really see what's you know a hundred or two hundred meters ahead of you. So, yeah. yeah, obviously, super incredible place. And um, yeah, obviously, you've really got to change your approach to, to it like any other track obviously um you know you've got tracks like you know with with full credit to them um you know obviously all our permanent tracks here that you know you can just head out the gate and um and push you know straight away um you know you might find yourself at bathurst where you know it might be you know, might have done practice one practice two qualifying and it might only be race one or two that you're really starting to to push and obviously um yeah there's uh there's there's you know, plenty of, of famous accidents at the track there, and um, yeah, we're really trying to, um, to keep. Um, obviously, you're or keeping your car straight is the is the biggest thing there. You don't Number learn the damaged car, so yeah, we're um, you know, been been fortunate to have raced there plenty of times now, and um, yeah, really starting to get a good handle of the place. But um, yeah, you know, even um, I'm sure after your, your 20 or 25th bath, it's just still learning plenty of things there. So yeah, I'll we're um, yeah, really, 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 it's really a very, obviously. Um, yeah, I was going to say it's a very unforgiving track um, because, you know, you've got no runoff. You've got that wild elevation change. You've got the high speeds. There's not a lot because most of the tracks around Australia, I mean, Phillip Island's probably the second most elevation change. I'm, I'm trying to think of another, you know, there's a little yeah. bit of a hill at Barbagello, but most of the tracks around the country, like, they're pretty flat. Yeah, that's that that's 100% right there. Obviously, um, you know, in terms of total – elevation um Correct. you know gain and, and all um you Phillip island's probably your, your biggest bet but um yeah yeah obviously um you know it's it's not completely key to have 
to, to have elevation in, in a good track but um yeah it's just so different to, to anything else and um else, yeah. yeah yeah um the first time you drive around there it's um it's certainly <laughs> getting, i guess you you look around it at other circuits um around the world it's probably again it's probably got some of the biggest um you know kind of difference in points high to high to low so um yeah, yeah I think it's um no, it's fine corners and yeah mate, coming oh, through the and, yeah the whole, the whole thing is just madness now, mate, is, you've gone from, yeah, so Formula Ford, um, the 8.6, you've done some endurance racing. Why TCR? What appealed to you about that category? I think TCR um, is, is a really nice, fresh, um, kind of uh, exciting category for, for Australia. Obviously, um, traditionally, Vair Supercars has, has really had a, a, a real big reign on, on the Premier um, you know, as a premier category in Australia. And, um, yeah, obviously, you know, with, with full, um, you know, credit and respect to, to supercars, I've, I've grown up wanting to, you know, drive and, and race a Viet supercar. And, um, yeah, however, I think TCR, obviously, it's still a, a new category in Australia. I only started in, in 2019 and we're only in our third season um, as a category, I think um, is a really, really nice refresh. It's been extremely well promoted with um, some, some really top-level teams and drivers competing and obviously um the cars have a, a really strong tie to, to europe and overseas being a, a global category there's there's a world tcr championship and now a tcr world tour as it'll be called next year and obviously 30 regional categories um all throughout the world throughout you know australia new zealand asia the us europe there's um you know pretty much any corner of the globe you'll be able to find a, a tcr series so i think the fact that obviously you look at veered supercars and um you know the cars are so unique you're racing against drivers that have been driving them for for 15 or 20 years and obviously mm -hmm. the the amount of um resource and experience that those drivers have in those cars are you know as a, as a young driver you know it's going to take you years and years and years to be able to get up to a level of, of those drivers in those cars whereas tcr it's fresh it's something different obviously um australia hasn't had a front wheel drive premier category in, in in a very long time and i feel like the kind of combination of front wheel drive and and the TCRs being unique means that, um, you know, top level drivers can can um, jump in the cars and, and their years and years and years of experience, while will be applicable, um, you know, isn't completely um, completely controlling of, of the, their experience in the cars and the lap time. So it allows kind of younger drivers like me and, and many others to, to really um, take it to take it to some experienced drivers. And I think that's great for, for our profile um, to be able to, you know, have, have some really good references in the category for both teams and drivers young driver and in a private team to be able to you know take it to some some really big names is, is a really cool um, really cool thing for us so yeah we we really really uh like the formula and um, the way that the categories run here in australia and i think it's got mm. so a really good future here for, for for teams in australia and then team and then drivers in australia and overseas i i totally agree with you because i think you know the hard thing for a lot of series and you know you see a lot come and go unfortunately because you know motorsport is expensive motorsport is difficult it's complicated there's a, there's a lot that goes into putting in a big series and the fact that tcr is a global category um it's got strong manufacturer support and i love you know personally i love the diversity of the the brands and the fact that there's more coming in um you know when you've got you know honda and alfa romeo and volkswagen and audi like you've just got such a wonderful spread of vehicles um, I, I just think that that's sensational for motor racing. Yeah, one hundred percent. Obviously, um, yeah, I think they're up to now fifteen or sixteen different manufacturers that have uh, have a homologated TCR car for competition, and um, yeah, obviously, it, it makes so so much sense on on so many levels. Obviously, um, yeah, it's it's applicable for for manufacturers and, um, and you know OEM suppliers and businesses in the automotive industry there. Whereas you know you compare it to a Viet supercar and um you know in at least in its current guys in in gen yeah. 2 you know the only real applicable part from a road car might be the badge or door handles but yeah, um, the door yeah. handles mate the rest of the things you know they there are still still oh sorry they're a tube frame chassis so yeah I, right that was the hardest thing when i went and saw them and you're like oh hang on that's not it it's not like because i mean it's something i always enjoyed about i guess you know 80s and 90s motor racing where they were you know, literally a road car, but spec'd up. Yeah, for sure. And I think that really, um, really relates to, to TCR. Obviously, you've got, 
you know, a full uh, floor plan um, of, a, of a road car. You've got all but a road engine, um, you know, all road doors and, and things like that. So there's so many different parts and, um, you know, take nothing away from, from Veer Supercars. It's a, it's a, um, obviously oh, a, a great, a great um, example of the engineering and things that goes on in Australia and the design of these cars to yeah. be able to, to do a thousand caves or, you know, curbs at the Gold Coast or anything like that. They're extremely cool cars, but um, yeah, obviously TCR, it certainly brings the cost down for the teams, which is, which is important. And I guess it doesn't That's matter. It. You're upright and the car costs twenty thousand dollars or yes. one thousand dollars you know it's still going to make the racing really good so um yeah we're really happy with with tcr and the formula and, and it works mm. well for a more privateer team and um yeah we're really happy to be here and um yeah the longer we can be in tcr the better i think i i think so too and i think that the fact that it is you know more applicable for a privateer team because again to you know be a privateer in supercars i mean that's that's a big exercise that is not mucking around Whereas, you know, even though, you know, there is still a significant barrier to entry, um, it's nowhere near as ridiculous as sort of some of those other categories. And and I really do think that that is, again, it's wonderful for motorsport. Now, mate, you started in a Volkswagen. So talk to me, what, why the Volkswagen? What, what was the opportunity there? So we, we moved into the Volkswagen um, at the start of 2021, so around kind of February, March. We missed the first round of the 2021 season that was at Simmons Plains, but we lined up for the second round that was at, uh, at Phillip Island, and that worked out worked out really well. Obviously, um, the car was, um, yeah, available for sale, and, and we did a little bit of a, a deal to kind of do a bit of a kind of try before you buy, I guess you could call it, at, um, at Phillip Island. And, yeah, we, um, we worked out you know, a way to put all that together and, um, you know, obviously ran all the costs and, and got a really good group of sponsors on board that, that helped us for that weekend. And, um, you know, from there, we were pretty much pretty much hooked on, on TCR from there. So I guess um, that was a, a pretty big race meeting um, for me. I hadn't raced, obviously, with, with 2020 and, and COVID. I hadn't raced mm. at that point for, for 18 months. I'd never <laughs> raced a, a tin top in a sprint race. I'd never driven oh. a left drive race car oh, in a no. race. I'd never raced on a slick tire. I'd never oh. barely driven a front wheel drive car at all. Um, oh, nice. Driven the, the Volkswagen and hadn't sat in it till the Wednesday of the race meeting. So, um, wow. yeah, there was, there was a, a huge meeting. And obviously, we, we certainly didn't set our expectations too high. It was our no. first weekend as a, as a privateer team. We had assistance from, from Melbourne Performance Centre. But, you know, our first weekend with, you know, I had a new engineer for the first time, you oh, know. Wow. I, um so that was um yeah a pretty big pretty big eye opener that one but um yeah we we just kept learning and learning and, and putting the laps in and you know not trying to make any any mistakes and things like that but um yeah we had our, our first race and um 20 cars in the grid pretty understandably qualified you know 20th and um you know we we're kind of around that two second mark off off the pace but um you know yeah. all things being we're pretty happy with that and um yeah, the cars, um, all the kind of TCR teams, they um, they transport the cars on um, wet tires, which are kind of called travel travel tires, um, yeah. as they're as they're called. And um, it was around kind of two or three o'clock, and um, we we're lining up for race one. And about um, probably about half an hour before the race, the, the heavens open, and it was um, completely like obviously massive rain. The track was soaked. Um, you know, about to line up for my first TCR race, and um, yeah, we we're kind of thinking, oh. You know, do we go and spend probably two and a half thousand dollars on a new set of wet tires? And you mm. know, we're looking at our, our options and thought, you know, ah, oh, look, probably best to run the car on on the travel tires, which are um, at that stage, I think they're around eighteen months old and you know, kept in the sun, so the, the tires weren't very very flash at all. <laughs> Not and, the um, best. <laughs> Andy, here, who's been with us ever since that round, he's um, he's obviously does a, a fantastic job on the car. Um, and he's from DNA Autosport in Sydney, and yeah, um, yeah, he, um, yeah we, we kind of got the travel tyres, and um, you know, obviously a new tyre that Andy'd worked with, so you know, pressured him how we thought, and um, yeah, we rolled off the grid in um, off off the back in in twentieth, and um, yeah, kind of obviously got, got the car off the line, and that was all good, and. As you can imagine, the wet tires on in TCR, the Michelin tire is is incredible. It's it's got so much grip in the in the wet weather, and obviously the way that the the tread um, blocks are, um, are constructed, it throws up a lot of water, mm. which is good. Obviously, disperses the water, and that's more performance. But you know, kind of for me in in twentieth in 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 off the back, um, you know, with with nineteen other cars in front of us, um, you know, the amount of spray 
that was thrown up in the air um, by the water was was incredible. So you know, I literally couldn't see anything. I could couldn't probably see. see the stars in front of me in their rain lights, and and that was about it. So kind of uh, you know driving by feet a braille, um, you know, with kind of brutal. track is and you know, be what's wet and what's dry on track in terms of puddles and things. But um, yeah, we just kept the car on the track and, and kept slowly picking off the positions. And um, yeah, it was a 20 lap race that one. And um, yeah, it just kind of kept slowly moving our way uh, forward. And then, um, yeah, it kind of got to, I think, um, yeah, just kind of obviously some, some cars are falling off and we just kept going and going and made some really good overtakes. And yeah, we ended up uh, uh, in our first TCR race in, in, um, in classified in ninth. So that was unreal to move forward 11 spots. And um, yeah, obviously from there, I think we needed some results of around uh, 12th and 13th to finish the, the weekend there. But, um, yeah, yeah, that was an awesome meeting for us. And, Massive. Um, yeah, we're obviously stoked, stoked from there. And then, um, yeah, after that, we had a, another meeting at, at City Motorsport Park, which was a local round. And, mm-hmm. um, yeah, again, just learning learning TCR. We, we had a pretty different crew again that weekend, just, um, you know, a, a few more guys on board and, and really trying to find our feet. And then that was, um, yeah, that was a really good round for us. And then, um, yeah, had a – probably what was about a six month break um with some some events getting cancelled uh towards the end of 2021 there and then um yeah, yeah we had our, our first tcr round at bathurst uh, in december which was an incredible event and um pro- def- definitely by far the, the coolest event that i've ever competed in so that was the bathurst 1000 in 2021 and that was a six-day event and uh, with 10 categories competing so that was kind of um yeah the kind of mecca of of motorsport in australia in terms of track you know all the best categories that you could ever think of competing so um yeah that was that was a great weekend for us we had our, our best result in tcr to date uh which was a sixth place uh in the long 50 minute race and that's what we've got again this weekend so um yeah hopefully we can duplicate that a bit in our audi now one of the things i did want to talk to you about um like the business of motorsport so mate one of the things i've been very impressed with is the team of people that you've built around you and again you know you've done most of this independently uh as i understand like this this isn't your folks running this for you this is this is you running this team uh tell me a little bit about that yeah that's right so obviously um great to to have plenty of good people around me helping out but um yeah that's right so i run purple sector which is um a business that um obviously uh competes in 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 motorsport and tcr um and then obviously that um that is what um, yeah, obviously, um, is, is, our, is our entity and our team name. Um, and then obviously from there, I, I um, work hard with, with others. Paul, our team manager, who is a sponsor as well, he's um, been incredible for us and, and certainly wouldn't be anywhere near TCR without his support. But um, yeah, obviously between myself and Paul as, as team owner and, and Paul as team manager, um, we, we put in plenty of hours, um, you know, talking with our, our current sponsors and um, and obviously, you know, trying to branch out into into future um, and potential partners as well. And, um, yeah, always trying to work really hard to, to help, um, you know, service their needs and, um, you know, make a, a really good um, good time out of TCR and our team. And, um, yeah, obviously really enjoying that. I'm learning so much as, you know, kind of a driver and, and also in business as well. But, um, yeah, obviously definitely um, putting – we obviously now have our, our cars um, in a local workshop um, that we do all the work and, and prep and servicing in. Um, with some of the larger servicing items, we use DNA Autosport in Sydney for, for their help. But um, yeah, you know, probably 90% of the work now we're doing ourselves, which is which is really good. Um, obviously, you know, learning a lot, controlling the costs and things. Um, so yeah, I think as a kind of driver and team owner, I'm learning a lot um, on kind of that level. And um, yeah, That's really it's, see how we yeah, go. Yeah, it's massive. You know, as a 19-year-old man, I mean, mate, I was a loose cannon at TAFE. You know, I was drinking beers and, you know, swimming... <laughs> whereas you know you're there you know running a motorsport team running the business you know behind the team working with your sponsors attracting new team partners like there, there is a lot going on in that mate and I, I honestly I take my hat off to you because it it's very impressive you know what you guys have built there now you mentioned Paul so Paul Fry from uh, Vag Parts mate do you want to tell me a little bit about that how that came together yeah, that was pretty pretty interesting. So I guess um, going going right back um, in around kind of twenty eighteen um, was when I was when I met Paul. And at the time, um, I was uh, we there was a local sim center that started up in in Bower, which is our, our local town where I live. Um, and yeah, obviously it's a small country town, and 
um, yeah, pretty unique for it to, to have a, a sim center um, like that that was that was started up. And um, yeah, obviously through that, um, I went there a lot. And um, you know, at the time, I didn't have a, a sim at home, so I used that a lot to prepare for upcoming events and, and different cars and things that I was driving. And that worked out really well. And obviously, um, you know, obviously in such a small town and you know a niche, um, you know, a niche business, the the customers that were going to the sim centers were, you know, really um, really kind of getting getting involved in in um, yeah. what was you know, started up some a, a really nice community there. So, um, yeah, obviously with that, I was uh, 15 at the time, and um, you know, obviously talking with um, plenty of the kind of guys there that were racing against, and you know, some of them had some some nice um, you know road cars, some Porsches and Ferraris and things. And um, yeah, through that, um, I met. Well, we went on a on a road drive um, with some of the guys there. So I wasn't even old enough to have my learner's permit at the time, but um, <laughs> tagging along with with these guys and some in some cool cars and you know going through mountain runs and things um you know obviously barrel's got some some great um scenery and driving roads so that was all all really well and um yeah a friend of paul's nathan um he um i was with him that day and he invited paul down from sydney and um yeah paul and i met and you know uh he's got a paul's got a, an awesome um audi rs6 uh sedan which is the, um, you know, V10 Turbo is um, is a pretty cool car. And, you know, we just got talking and, um, yeah, from there, you know, found out a little bit about what Paul done and, and we kept in touch. And, um, yeah, Paul supported us through the, both Bathurst Six Hour events that we that we did there um, that we spoke about before. So his business solo work, um, you know, he'd been partnered with us for that event and all worked out really well. And, um, you know, we just kept talking and talking. And obviously, um, you know, Paul's business with vag parts which is volkswagen and audi group parts um you know obviously tcr was on on his radar as a, as a motorsport category and, and that was you know the time that it was in its infancy uh, in 2019 and you know we kept talking and and obviously the the volkswagen golf that were um that we looked at um at the start of 2021 really made sense for his business and um you know we formed a, a, an alignment a, a, an agreement there and um, yeah, kind of the, the rest is history. So it all went really well there. And, and Paul is just, you know, I, I can't thank him enough for, for all the hours and everything that he puts in. He's, um, you know, started as a, as a sponsor and, you know, he's really taken it by the, um, by the scruff of the neck and really, um, you know, pushed hard to to make our, our team um, and, you know, all the driving possible. So, um, yeah, he's been, been really, really um, fantastic for our team and, and can't thank him enough there. And, um, yeah, obviously really enjoying all the time. And, and now in the Audi, it obviously still aligns really well with his business and um, we we'll keep from there. So, yeah, it's um, worked out really well. Now, you've moved, obviously, this year. You've gone from uh, the Volkswagen. Um, the Audi came available and you've done a deal on that and and – stepped into that car how have you found the transition um between you know so you've yeah two different marks that you've run this year yeah it's really interesting obviously um you know when we've got you know both cars side by side in the workshop you look over it and you would really be surprised to see how there could be much of a difference between the volkswagen and the audi you open the engine bay you know both identical engines gearbox drive train um you know kind of cooling components there's so many common parts uh, all the interior you know, looks all but identical, dash or steering wheel, you know, all the electronics, switch, switch um, panels, you know, they're all the same. But um, the main difference between the Volkswagen and the Audi is um, obviously the Volkswagen is a hatch and the Audi is a sedan. Um, and just the way that the air runs over the rear of the car in the sedan uh, means that there's a lot less drag that comes off the rear of the car and okay. also means that there's a little bit more rear downforce as well. So in some of the tracks that we're racing at this year, um, in TCR, the Volkswagen isn't quite suited to some of the longer straights that we race at. Um, it's exceptional wow. in under brakes and, and handling, um, but um, yeah, really just struggles a little bit in some of the longer straights. But um, you know, it's got so many positives. It's an extremely reliable car. It's, you know, it's, it's economical to run in terms of um, looking at other brands in TCR. And um, yeah, but you know, where we're at in TCR, we're just really chasing, and obviously. The field is just so close. You look at Phillip Island earlier in the year uh, in qualifying and, you know, the difference between first and 21st was, you know, less than a second. So, you know, you really can't leave anything on the table no. there. And, um, yeah, obviously we were um, – we kind of – the the way that it all kind of opened up is that, yeah, kind of mid-season that the Audi that we, we purchased was available and we moved into, into that uh, mid-season. So, obviously, that was a big change for us. Um, we kind of obviously – just thought that we'd be best to commit to the Audi uh, for the final three rounds of the season and, and really focus on a, on a season for, 
for 2023 um, and use this year to kind of develop and get our heads around the car. So that's what we did. Um, obviously, the car's shown some really good glimpses of speed so far. And, you know, we just can't wait to get to Bathurst. We're probably the fastest car. In, we've gone from kind of the slowest car in a straight line to probably the fastest car in a straight line. So that's going to be nice. really cool to see. And, um, yeah, obviously, from what we had across the top of the mountain in the Gulf, I think we can easily transfer over to the Audi. So, yeah, we're really just keen to see how we can go with that and um, and go from there. But, um, yeah, we're, we're stoked with the Audi. And um, it's just exactly what we need as a team. And, you know, down to me to put it all together. And so, obviously, the Audi um, is backed by Forza Brakes Motorsport. Now, you had been working with uh, Greg Latham and Forza um, with the Audi because they'd had their product, and I know that you'd been running them on the car previously. Um, tell me a little bit about your experience uh, with, with Forza. Yeah, it's been been really good. Obviously, um, Greg and the team there have been been supporters of our TCR program from from round one in in Phillip Island, all the way last year, and and that was a fantastic synergy again between Paul at Vag Parts and and Greg at Forza. Um, Paul sells uh, all of Greg's uh, Volkswagen Audi Group line of Forza product in Paul's online store, so that works out really well there obviously Paul had had a, a long and lasting relationship with with Greg there and you know using the motorsport program to, to really strengthen that relationship so that's worked out really well we've been been using Forza brakes at, at every round um, that we've competed in TCR in both the Golf and the Audi now and yeah obviously with um, you know some of the agreements that they had earlier in the year um, you know with the Audi that kind of um, you know kind of slowed up there with, um, with the other team and we, we picked the car up and um, you know carried a, an, an agreement over with with the car so that worked out really well and obviously um yeah greg and the team they're, they're great to have around and um you know really cool guys and you know it's just so great to be able to be using their their quality product exactly um you know how it's sold to, to road cars on on our tcr car and obviously um you know the with with as i mentioned how competitive and and things tcr is if, if the product wasn't good we simply wouldn't be using it so um yeah we're just a, a testament to the product that that they sell and um, obviously that the support and service that we get from them um, that can you know in, in all in all uh, aspects of of um, you know braking and, and everything in the car um, you know their support is, is fantastic so yeah I think it works out really well the relationship here between um, Paul from from Vag Parts from Greg from Forza and um, and ourselves at Purple Sector I think it works out really well and uh, yeah just keen to see how Bathurst goes to round out the year. Oh, yeah, to really push it, because I think it's one of the lovely sort of examples of, you know, people that are interested in getting involved in motorsport. So they might not have ever sponsored a team or worked with a team, um, and they might not even know where to start, because motorsport can seem like something that, you know, might be a bit inaccessible. Like if you just go, you know, as a punter and you're behind the fence and you're not allowed into pit lane, you know, for people like you and I who spend an awful lot of time around it and might have grown up around it, it's just normal and you sort of know everybody and like, oh, g'day, mate. Um, but for businesses that haven't been involved before, you know, what would be your advice to say, you know, if you were keen to get involved in motorsport and potentially look at even things like technical partnerships, what, what would be your thoughts around that? Yeah, for sure. And, and I guess it kind of stems back to, to as you mentioned, a lot of it, um, you know, seems, seems you know, really, um, you know, really big and, and out of reach. But, um, you know, we're just all people, um, you know, competing and, and, and doing what we love. And, um, you know, because of that, you know, we're obviously really always working really hard to, to help our partners and, and get good value from that. So obviously, um, yeah, never be afraid to, to reach out at a racetrack, um, you know, any, any team of any level, um, you know, can... Can can accommodate, um, you know, your, your needs from from yeah anything anything at all. So um, yeah, obviously um, we're in the in the current day of um, you know social media and websites and everything. Um, I feel like all the kind of teams and drivers are, are quite accessible now. And um, yeah, just don't be afraid to reach out. And um, yeah, I'm sure any team up and down pit lane would be um, yeah more than happy to to help you. Um, yeah, you know, obviously work out a, an agreement there and get involved because it's one of those things where you know if you don't reach out and say good day it's obviously not going to happen um because you know i I'd, I'd looked at I, I remember even when my business was in its early days um and and i remember seeing you know somebody i knew that had you know they were involved with a Porsche cup car and i remember thinking how cool it would be 
to have my company logo on a race car. And I mean, that just seemed so impossible. Um, you know, whereas now, you know, obviously I've, I do some work with yourself and it, it, it makes me so excited. Like I'm so proud to be involved, you know, with a great driver, a great team, you know, really good people. And it's something that, you know, brings a lot of joy. It's wonderful to be around. And I think that that's something that's, you know, really important for, you know, a driver sponsor relationship is it's got to be something that, you know, that you enjoy. And that tends to be, and you would have seen it over the years. It's, it's people that just love cars, love motorsport, love being around it. Um, they do tend to be the people um, whose businesses end up being attracted uh, to a bit of motor racing. I'm sure you've seen that over the years. Yeah, hundred percent. And obviously, um, yeah, and it's obviously you're hundred percent right there. But then also, like, um, you know, we've had some um, community partnerships as well with some some other businesses uh, and things like that. You know, where they might have brought their staff or customers along that have never seen a race car on track or never even been to a racetrack, and um, you know, kind of seeing their eyes light up at you know what what this you know whole different uh, environment is. Uh, you know, in, in terms of you know being at a, a motorsport event is um is pretty cool to see also. But um yeah, you know it's great to see so many different kind of people from from all walks of life get involved in in motorsport sponsorship. And um yeah, obviously there's plenty of different ways uh, now that you can um, really provide provide value to that. And um you know there's there's just so much more that goes on to just a sticker in the a sticker on the car. And um you know obviously absolutely. All, um, yeah, all plenty of ways that we, um, we 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 put all that together. But um, yeah, I think it's all really um, all really cool with that. And um, yeah, obviously, you know, seeing people being involved with our team and enjoying it is um, yeah, nothing better for us. And mate, this weekend, obviously, you're heading to Bathurst. It's the final round of the TCR Australia series, and it's also worthwhile mentioning that the whole series is um, broadcast on Stan Sport. So there's wonderful coverage of this event. Um, Talk to me about the weekend, mate. What's the plan? What are you looking forward to? What are you excited about? What are you nervous about? Yeah, so obviously, um, anytime you, you you go to Bathurst, it's um it's pretty pretty special. Obviously, um you know for for those that have been there, you drive down the road and you know you get closer and closer to to Bathurst, you know coming from from the Blue Mountains, and you see a little speck on the um on the horizon. It's you know. Mount Panorama and you get closer and closer and you see the sign on, on the on the top of the hill and um yeah obviously there's nothing 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 um nothing better than than the feeling of you know I've been to Bathurst multiple times as both a spectator and then a driver and you know it doesn't matter what um what level you're at there it um, feels special every time so obviously there's a, a few little butterflies things like that you know driving into the event but once you're all set up it's um it means business so we're really really excited and as I mentioned earlier uh, anytime you go to Bathurst, you're, ne you're never flat out on on lap one, um, like you are at other tracks, and you always just got to build up. And um, you know, when the when the mountain bites, it bites hard, and you've just got to make sure that you can do everything that you can. So that that's not you, and you're always always learning. Um, obviously, um, you know, if you have an incident, um, you know, early in kind of a practice, it can take you out for a whole day or weekend. So, yeah, you just need to keep putting the laps in, and um, yeah, obviously. With TCR, we're we're really fortunate to be the headline category at this event. So we've got three fifty-minute races. So obviously, um, you know, a lot longer than our traditional races. Our normal races are around twenty to twenty-five minute races. So obviously, um, you know, with that, we're extremely, um, we're extremely uh, lucky to be having such long races. In the back. You got so many times to um, so many laps to, to keep learning. So um, yeah, we'll obviously try and get some some good laps in in, in practice. And I think uh, our new Audi, obviously first time. At Bathurst in the Audi, um, we'll be able to kind of take everything we've learned with the golf and, and move it on um, from there, and then um, yeah, keep on laps in, and um, obviously qualifying on Saturday mornings. I think when we'll be really having a, a big crack, and we'll go from there. How good, uh, honestly, mate. That's as good as a weekend can ever get. Now, Lockie, I'm uh, obviously conscious of your time. You've got a lot going on this week. It's uh, and I'm delighted uh, that you could spend some time with me this morning, mate. Thank you. I really appreciate it. No, no, any any time, Scott, really appreciate your help. And obviously, um, yeah, awesome jump on the pod. And yeah, obviously, um, yeah, so so keen to have you with us at Bathurst. It's going to be an awesome weekend. And um, yeah, I think it's going to be uh, going to be really good. Mate, I'm hanging out. I'm driving down on Friday. Yeah, yeah, mate, my, my mechanic's getting the Land Cruiser checked over. I, I can't wait to be there. Now, buddy, if people want to follow you, um, how can people follow uh, your adventures around the internet and everything that you're up to. Yeah, so I guess I'm on um, most of the main social medias there, Instagram and Facebook. Um, so my Instagram's 
at Lachlan Maneef, two E's, two F's. Um, and then obviously Facebook is Lachlan Maneef Motorsport. And then also my website, which is lachlanmaneef.com. Fantastic, mate. I'll throw the notes uh, in the show notes. I'll put uh, all the links there so people can follow you. Mate, best of luck for this weekend. I will see you in person at the mountain. And, mate, uh, if people want to watch Stan Sport, Super Cheap Auto, TCR Australia this weekend, racing kicks off on Friday. Loggy, thanks for being with me this morning. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll sign off there and we'll see you at the mountain. Awesome. Thanks, mate. Cheers. Thanks, guys. Cheers, buddy. Yeah.